Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Diamond Billiard Products and Accustats Video Productions, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2015 Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge. This is live from the Accustats Arena here at the Horseshoe Southern Indiana, the home of the Derby City Classic. And as you well know by now, but I'm going to say it anyway, this is a special event. We've been having it here for a number of years with great, great reception from all of you. The Diamond Bigfoot Challenge is a 16-player single elimination event with a $1,000 entry fee, and $16,000 has been added to that, courtesy of Diamond Billiard Products and Jay Helford. And we want to thank them both very much on behalf of our players. So we have $32,000 at stake. Only the top four get paid. This particular match right here will guarantee the winner at least $4,000 and the right to go to the final four tomorrow. Unfortunately, the loser will get a handshake. This is, uh, all these matches are races to 11 games. The format is rack your own, winner breaks with a 40 second shot clock. The 10 ball, if made on the break, does not count as a win. It will respot and the player will continue to shoot. Unlike other 10 ball tournaments, this particular one is not being played with call shot rules. Therefore, as long as the lowest numbered ball on the table is legally struck, anything that goes in after that does count. We are playing with all ball fouls as well. So at this time, let's get underway and introduce our two competitors. Our first player is making his debut here at the Derby City Classic. He comes to us all the way from Manila in the Philippines. He's sponsored by London Bridge. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a warm derby welcome for Jeff Ignacio. Thank you very much. And his opponent, from Beast League Surigao del Sur in the Republic of the Philippines, certainly no stranger to this center court or center courts around the world. And without question, one of these days in the next four or five years, we're going to see him inducted into the BCA Hall of Fame. He's a former World 8-Ball Champion. He's a former World 9-Ball Champion. He's a former WPA Player of the Year. And he is trying to become the first man in history to win this event twice, having won it in 2013. Sponsored by Bugsy Promotions and Tiger Products, would you please welcome Robocop. It's Dennis, or Cuyo. Okay, gentlemen, go ahead and lag for the break, if you would, please. At this time, it's my pleasure to send it to the booth to the voice of Accustats, Billy Incardona and Bill Gibbs. Take it away, guys. Welcome, everybody, to Accustats' live coverage of the 17th Annual Derby City Classic. Tonight's Bigfoot Challenge match features Dennis Orcolo and Jeff Ignacio. I'm Billy Gibbs, your host, and I'm joined in the booth tonight by the legendary voice of Accustats himself, Bill Incardona. What do you think of the matchup, Billy? Uh, thanks a lot, Bill. Uh, Jeffrey Ignacio, don't let his youthful appearance fool you. This guy can really play. He's one of the fine, one player from that fine crop of players in the Philippines that have come over here to the United States to try their skills against the, uh, the best players in the world. And Ignacio, I watched him play a couple times only in the practice room. This will be my first opportunity to watch him play you know, in a live match. But what I've seen in the practice room, this guy can flat out play. Uh, or Coolio, obviously, he's one of the best players, if not the best player in the world today. He really, in my opinion, has his hands full with Ignacio. I look for this to be a really sharply contested match. But of course, you got to give the edge to that guy right there on the screen, Dennis Coolio. Well, I know that there can't be too many 10-foot tables in the Philippines, so this has got to be new to kind of both of them, I would imagine, yeah, to some degree. I know Dennis has played on the 10-footer a bunch down in Tunica, for example. The 10-foot table presents a big challenge to anybody that wants to play on it. Even, even the best players in the world, it's a very demanding table. The extra foot in length and half a foot in, in the width creates big time problems if you don't bear down because this table says if you don't bear down you're not going to beat me and that's what these guys are doing they're trying to beat the table and when you're playing the 10 foot table it's a big big task well the first break's underway and uh ignacio's come up dry dennis has got a nice shot on the one but that 210 down there 
I don't know if he can get on it real good, but it's awful tempting, I would think. Well, first, he can't reach it, and that's really uh, the disadvantage that shorter players have, particularly playing on a 10-foot table. There's going to be a lot of times when they can't reach the shot, and being, a, you know, the 10-foot table, you know, the, there's a lot more stroke you need to put into certain shots, and if you can't reach them, that spells big-time trouble. Let's see how uh, Coolio handles this. He can't really reach it comfortably. I don't know if he has an extension. Well, they'll automatically give him the extension on the time clock. You get one per rack per player. I'm talking about an extension for his cue stick. Oh, the bridge. Gotcha. Going to have to get back. Oh, boy. Don't I don't know what this. happened there. Yeah. Miss cue or what happened? That was a bad shot. Yeah, it was a miscue, but he obviously <laughs> scooped the ball. Well, let's get an overhead view of this here. I want to point out something, if you will. Now, notice the position of the 2 and the 10. There is some distance in between the 2 and the 10, which means that the 2 ball can actually cut the 10 into the, into the pocket. But to do that, you're going to have to get precise on the angle. I don't know if that could be... I don't know if he can get where he needs to, where he needs to be. So, uh, very interesting what he's going to do here. He may try to draw straight into the 210. Now, he looks like he's playing for the, for the combination. He's not going to get there. Wow, look. Really fortuitous kiss off that four ball. Looks like he may have ended up uh, in pretty good line for that 210 combination. You know, it's amazing, but on the 10-foot table, you'd think the hardest thing to do is get hooked, and a lot of people have really come up with that. The speed's just missed a little bit, and they're finding their way behind balls pretty easily. That's a big surprise to me. Yeah, I agree. He's lining up that combination I was alluding to. Uh, it's makeable. Ignacio, considered in the Philippines, is the best young player in the Philippines. And that says a lot. I was talking to Reyes earlier today. He says there's many players in the Philippines that are playing well. He said the young players in the Philippines, there's a lot of them, and they all play well. I was real surprised to see him hit that as poorly as he did. I well, Dennis he, has got an opportunity now. That's almost like ball in hand where the two balls place, really. What about that 5-9, Billy? Well, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. Uh, the 5 doesn't go. I don't believe it, it, it goes into uh, either corner or pocket. Uh, it does go into this, this side, but he's not going to play position for that. I think he's going to go into the 5-9 uh, here. Looks like he got the angle to do that. Boy, he came up. He didn't try. He must be going to play the 9. Maybe maybe play a safety of some court, sort of. Yeah. He's got the angle to just stick the cue ball behind the nine. Let's see if he does that. Good call. I don't think he's gotten away with it. I do believe Ignacio can see the uh, a side of the five here. Yes, he can. I think he might be hooked a little bit. He's going to have to kick. Pretty nice touch there. He had a chance of getting him on the nine if he would have bumped it a little fuller. And this is a tough shot here. He can bank it cross side, but uh, he's got a suspect, a suspect, suspect cue ball. So therefore, maybe banking it cross side is not the shot. He's going to probably try to position the cue ball behind the seven, or the or the six, I should say, uh, by the ten ball. Yeah, that looks like the way he went. I don't know if he's gotten away with it. It looks like he did. This is going to be a very interesting shot coming up coming up here. Well, Ignacio's uh, probably going rail first, don't you think? I don't know if he has the angle to go rail first. I think it may be just a little too long, but maybe not. But uh, if he can go rail first and pocket the five, that's what he'll try. But that, that shot can't be hit too hard. You lose control of the cue ball. So if you obstacle real first here, I look for him to hit it softly. And we hit it hard. That was the only problem with that shot. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I thought the next ball was the other green ball, which yeah. I was mistaken. 
It's a little confusing sometimes with the uh, six and the seven, but the six is the uh, lime green colored ball, we'll say, and the seven's the bird egg blue. Difficult choice here. He wants to cut it in the corner, which is the, the way we look at the monitor is the lower left-hand corner, and the way he's shooting it is the corner to his right on the lower part of the table. We'll call that the foot end of the table. He's looking to cut it in the corner. Now he's changed his mind. He's looking to play safe here. He, he thought that he could position the seven ball, excuse me, the six ball at the other end of the table using the eight ball as a blocker. I, I don't think that uh, he blocked the shot with the eight. Well, it's all ball fouls, and he left or call over the ten. That's his only hope of not getting a good hit here, I think. Look at this. Wow, he made the bank. Unbelievable shot. I don't know if he really played it. I'm thinking that he did. But that's like playing golf. You play for a hole in one sometimes too, <laughs> don't you? But they're hard to get. Nice stroke. Now he's gotten himself in reasonable line for the eight. It carries a little bit of distance. But that shouldn't hurt this guy at all. Okonio, obviously one of the better shot makers, if not the best shot maker in the world today. Well, I think Dennis has got a good shot of putting one on the board here. When you're playing a 5 by 10 table, you better play angles because that's how to defeat the table, by playing angles. Once you find yourself straight in on shots and laying awkwardly on balls, that's when, that's when the problems come up on a 5 by 10 because then you're going to have to hit the shot with more speed, which would then in turn shrink the pocket. And all of a sudden, you know, you're not really figuring out things the right way and things aren't happening for you the right way. So playing on a 5 by 10 table, you want to play good angles because when you're talking about upper echelon players, particularly like the two players who are out there today, distance really doesn't carry that much of a problem for these kind of players. Providing you got the right angle, Okay, they can handle the distance and run the balls. Well, rack number one's in the books, and Arcolo's up there with the first mark on the board. Ignacio had his opportunity with that combination, but just couldn't quite get it to go. Let's see what Arcolo's break looks like. And you mentioned to me earlier, this is the first opportunity Ignacio had playing on the Akistats table. I think it's the second one. I might have made a mistake there, but... Well, my point was this, is that you may have, he may have those accustats jitters, meaning that uh, maybe uh, it's harder for him to execute or perform because of that reason. And that two-line combination certainly indicated to me that you were right about that because I thought he should have hit that shot a lot better than he did. Well, the other thing, too, it wouldn't be a far stretch to assume that Arcolo's one of his heroes. And that would put some nerves in your belly, too, I believe. Yeah, that's true. But uh, he's probably played against Arculio for, you know, uh, uh, right. probably many times. And like I said, the Filipinos uh, have him, uh, this man right here, Ignacio, as one of the best young players in the Philippines, if not the best young player in the Philippines. Pretty good looking guy, too. <laughs> I bet he's got some girls over there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Never misses a ball. Look at all them little ones. Oh, Walking yeah. Walking around him. Nice looking guy. Well, he's got something to deal with here. He makes this shot. He's going to have something on the back end of it. With the three ball there. Played safe. Excellent speed of the object ball. Notice the separation that he got with the two ball and the cue ball, and notice how, how well he controlled the speed of the two ball. Well, that shows some stamina. I mean, you know, he can't be too tight. He's got to be a little loose to play it that well. Tough spot for Aquilio here. Not much he can do. Let's see how he, how he figures this one. This is uh, very limited here in what he can do. 
A lot of traffic down here. He wants to make sure that he guides the cue ball through that traffic, which he's done very nicely, I might add. And ended up on this side of the table. Excellent speed once again. This time by Aquilio. Well, Ignacio, this is a pretty, you know, this is a tough kick going through the balls like that coming up on it. Two rails. It certainly is. You know, one thing about the Filipino players, Bill, and I'm sure you know, they know how to kick. They kick the balls better than anybody or any culture. And for young players to be that stable, I mean, you know, you know there's a lot of good young players over there, unlike in the United States where it seems like our young players have diminished over the years. He's going to lose the cue ball here. I do. Nope, he didn't. Once again, positioning it perfectly at the other end of the table. Once again, Ignacio steps to the table, needing to kick. He's going to probably show us his kicking, kicking skills again. Uh, did you see that kick that Bustamante executed in his match against uh, uh, Mora? It was, no, yeah, it was Mora. They came, where Mora came un, back and won. Yeah. Unbelievable. If you guys have an opportunity to get to watch that match, get it off of Pat. Uh, uh, that's Bustamante and Mora. You won't be disappointed in that one. Trust me. One of the best matches we've seen in quite some time. And they're talking about a safety battle. None better than the one illustrated in that particular match. Well, and, you know, the other thing is, too, Boosty was winning in that match 6-1, to one, wasn't he? Yeah, Bustamante was ahead the entire match until the very end. Mora showed such, I mean, uh, I mean, persistence and in, in, in heart and determination. And it paid off for him, you know, not to mention any skills that he has. He, he really played a beautiful match in that one game in particular. And if you people get that match, you'll know what the game I'm talking about. Never seen a game like that. I'm not going to tell you what happened. Just get the match. You'll find out. How about this, Billy? Look at what Ignacio just did to Arculo. He stuck him behind the uh, seven ball there. Yeah, and this is another little safety battle that's developing here. Quite interesting one in, 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 in itself. Well, that's the first miss here on uh, uh, either player from contacting the object ball. Ignacio trails in the match one game to nothing. Has an opportunity to tie it up. Let's take a look at the balls, the way they're positioned on the table. Now, the four ball, let's get a little overhead here. The four ball positioned right here. Yes, it, yeah, no, it, it, it doesn't even have a pocket. It doesn't have a pocket, so how is he going to attack this? He's going to probably play position on the four. Well, Billy, let, fact, me, let me ask you this. Would you play safe here, which is what he chose to do, I think? You, know, you, you have to... Uh, you have to agree with what he's done. Like I mentioned, well, he didn't have a pocket for the four. The next best thing then it would be to play a safe and move the four. Move it so where you have a pocket for it, which he's done. Now Aquilio must hit the two because the four is in the open. If he doesn't hit the two here, he's going to try to tie up the two with the eight. I don't, I don't know if I like that shot. Well, it puts him on two, too, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, if you're Jeff Ignacio, do you try to three foul or a colo? <laughs> well, I don't think he has a choice because he can't go offensive here, you know? Exactly right. And I like what he's doing here. here uh, can I have an overhead here? Okay, this ball here is a big ball, meaning that once he positions the cue ball, like, for instance, right here, he can't kick over to this rail and then hit the two because of the, because of the ball right there. Now, he's looking to do something differently. I, he's looking to go behind the 10. I like his first thought. Tried to lock him up on the 5 in the rail. That looked like a Gary Space shot. <laughs> he's going to have to draw this. Once again, an overhead. We'll take a look at it. He wants to, if he, he may have this shot. With a low ball, he can go in here, bend it, and come back and hit the 2. He, he, he's, he's not even looking at that shot. I think he already took a quick glance at it. Glance at it and didn't like the angle. Now, if they're playing three consecutive fouls, that's lost the game, and it is. And that's the first time that I've ever seen Okolo lose a game committing three 
consecutive fouls. Let's mark that one down. Yeah, I agree with you. I've never seen a Quolo three foul. And I've got to say, when you're at a world-class level, the only thing that could be embarrassing to me more than this isn't on the pool table. Because that's rare you see world-class players three foul. Yeah, I agree, but I don't know if you've chosen the right word when you say more embarrassing because, you know, I don't, he, I don't think he really had much to say about it. Had he had a decent opportunity to strike the ball, I would agree. But uh, Ignacio pretty much locked him up there, you know? He did. Look at the look on his fa Dennis's face. Oh, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis is a pretty cool guy, you know. He's not going to let that bother him, trust me. You don't get your pitcher up there, 2014 all-around champion, if, uh, if you allow things to bother you. And that cat can really play, and then nothing seems to bother him. And he's not going to let someone 22 years old bother him, <laughs> that's for sure. Even if he does look like Jeffrey Ignacio. <laughs> but this guy can really play. Game number three coming up. Now, by the way, I watched him open up the balls when he was practicing, meaning breaking the balls. Right. A lot of power. Well, Big time power right here. Looks like Shane almost. Watch him raise up. Look at that. Big time power right there, I tell you. Balls exploded. Those, look how nicely they opened up. Absolutely. And a great shot on the one, too. Now, that was a textbook break right there. Cue ball came back, stopping near center table. Balls exploded, opened up nicely. Now cue ball's position in the center of the table, increasing your opportunity to end up with, shot, with a shot on the one. Nicely done. I don't see any trouble on the table, Billy. Looks like he's pretty much got everything going in the direction he needs to go to get out. Okay, this is the correct. He, I like what he's done here. I like going across the table here. We have an overhead. I like going across the table. Let me explain why. I like going across the table and then approaching it from this angle. That way. That way you're always in line to pocket the three and come back over for the four. That's the angle I like here. He hit it too strong there. Now he's going to end up straight in. Now he's going to draw it back. I like going across the table off the three to get shape on the four. Now he has to make sure that he gets back. Once again, with an overhead, please. If the cue ball ends up over here, as opposed to here, then he can pocket the three, use his side cushion, and come over here. Now he has a little bit of a problem drawing straight back. He has to clear the five now. Clearing the five, drawing straight back, is more difficult than going across table. And he didn't get there. Exactly what you were saying. Yeah, go over and, going over and back is a lot easier than trying to draw into that position for sure. The question is, what do you come up with now? Well, he is on, he is on the five though, really. The eight's not in the way. I miss saw that the whole way over there. You know, I'm playing position for the wrong ball, by the way. I'm I know, I did too. I was playing position for the green ball. These colors have really got me right here. I got to sharpen up my game. Well, you're allowed to miss every 20 <laughs> years, Billy. I was playing position for the other green ball. I guess when you reach a certain age. Well, the, the five, balls are different colors. Six, You've never seen this. Sometimes before five. Yeah. <laughs> Not true, but that's what I thought. I missed that, too. I was watching that, and I missed it as well. People out there are probably saying, what is he talking about? What is he talking about, you know? Well, like I, I said, in 20 years, you can make one mistake <laughs> in the booth. It's all right. Well, one thing's for sure. He's got something to think about now getting on the five ball. Because that's pretty rough. To not leave a shot when you're done. Which I think he's done. 
and he also knocked the eight in a much better position for Coolio. It's a much easier ball to play shape on off the seven. See, now the eight ball's in a position where he can use the rails to either go two cushions around or straight back or, or across table. Thanks. Oh, he, I can see the layout here. He's going to play a cue ball. It looks like to me near that side rail, so it'll go two cushions around the 10. Now he's looking to go straight in on the 8. I kind of like going two cushions around the 10. I think it's a much easier shot to execute. He can't really reach this. He's going behind his back. Talk about age. There's one thing you won't do when you're older. But I agree with you. I would have liked to have had the two cushion position here. And die Listen. off the third cushion at the very least. Exactly. Let's have an overhead, please. I like the uh, this angle, but the cue ball better. Because then he can pocket the eight and go two cushions around for the nine. Where he is now is going drawing straight back for the nine. Requires a much more difficult hit and a better stroke. And I've seen a few of these pop out of the pocket when you're using power to get there. And he doesn't have that good of a shot on the nine. I right. mean, as opposed to what he could have had going two cushions around the ten. Absolutely. And I really don't like to second guess players like Aculio, but at times I will. I think that was one of them right there. But you know what? He's such a resilient player. Such a excellent shot maker that shots like this doesn't present much of a problem at all. And he played bar table shapes on this <laughs> and hit it real well. Well, you got a little 50-yard line with that kiss. Yeah. Yep. So, sometimes when you end up with a more difficult shot on the nine, your next shot is difficult as well because you, you put all your effort in, into pocketing the ball and less into playing position because you want to make sure you stay in control of the table. He can cut this in. It's not an easy shot. He's close enough to the ball to hit it quite well. And that he did. He pocketed it and went to a two-to-one lead, did Ocolio. The one thing that I agree with in that, though, too, is when you lead that shot, you saw Dennis stand back up. He wouldn't want to pull the trigger on it, so he took a second look. And he didn't yeah. leave himself tough. If he'd have had that nine-ball position, all he would have done was float down the table. Well, Dennis is a very, a very careful player, and I mean that... Uh, uh, he's not going to do, he's not going to precipitously do something. He's not going to just rush into a shot, especially one that's demanding. He's going to think about it. He's going to make sure that all demanding shots are treated as such. They're treated with respect, and that's what he did. He backed up off the shot, went back down on it. He made up his mind how, what he was going to do before he, he attacked it, and that's what he did. This is rack number four coming up, or Coolio with the lead two games to one. Well, one thing I've noticed about Dennis this week is he really seems to have a feel for the break. And the first two breaks that he did sort of indicate that. You know, he's hitting the balls real well. And not everybody's been able to pocket the ball and hold the ball in position. We'll see if he changes to Jeff's, you know, style of break and hits him harder and pops the ball. He hasn't done that yet. He's been cutting the one on the side, excuse me. Made the nine. And that's a pretty good layout. He's got the one ball. Well, you know what he's doing? He's playing position on the one off the break. Now, sometimes yep. the ones are going to go on the side. But when it doesn't go on the side, it's going to end up where it is now, around that area. He's drawing the cue ball to the side rail, which will increase his chances of not scratching and coming up with a shot on the one. So, therefore, a lot of good thoughts is behind what he's doing, the technique in, in, in how he's attacking the break. All he needs to do is put a ball down on the break. If he doesn't put a ball down on the break, it'll work against him. But I feel he's confident right. that he will put a ball down on the break, and he'll be the recipient of a good layout more often than his opponent. Well, and so far, that's pretty much how it's played out. 
Let's take a look. Three, four, and the five are all pretty predictable. The six sits in front of the uh, side pocket. The seven there as well. Then we have a little bit of a problem with the eight. Not much, and not one he can't handle. But if there's any ball on the table that may create a little bit of a problem for him, it could be the eight. But I doubt it. Yeah, you know, I watched him play in his match against Chris Bartram. I thought I was watching a machine. I mean, he was never out of line. He never missed a ball. Uh, you know, he made it look like he was playing on a bar table. And this is a five by ten. Yeah. This is a very demanding Absolutely. table, and he handled it like it was a three and a half by seven, meaning the size of a bar table, a much smaller table. Well, he's gotten in pretty good line here to draw back for the eight. He could live with the position he's got right there with the cue ball now, really. You see what he did? He opted to follow the ball. Whenever you have a choice to either draw a shot or follow a shot, Always follow it because controlling a follow shot is much more simple than controlling a draw shot, especially when you have to draw at the intermediate range, like the two feet, two to three feet. Follow it. You'll get better results more often. And that's now, a good point. That's rack number four. Or Cooley will now take the two-game lead in the match, three games to one. So far, uh, Bill, uh, or Cooley obviously looks to me like the more experienced, better player. But it's still early in the match. The young 22-year-old hasn't really got his game together yet. Right. But in fairness, he hasn't had really that many opportunities. We'll see what happens here. Well, he might have been a little tight in those first couple of games like we noticed. But at the same time, you can see that he has a powerful stroke. And he hits the ball well. And he's obviously pretty experienced for a guy that nobody's ever heard of over here. So, you know, you can't really count somebody like that out. That's for sure. I heard all this when they were talking about Carla Biata, you know, when Biata first came over. And Biata, you know, is a tough player, no doubt. And it'll be interesting to see if Ignacio measures up to Biata. That's the one thing I want to see. Well, Biata is a little older than Ignacio. You know, Not but I much. think Ignacio is 22 years old. Yep, 22. Biata's got to be close to 25, right? Yeah, it's probably two or three yeah. years. Yeah. That's a big three years. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about three years playing against the best players in the world. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to grow up quite a bit in those three years. I agree. And I think we're going to find out just what you were talking about a minute ago. Because Dennis didn't come up with a ball there. And like you mentioned, he, Ignacio does have all the tools. He has the big brick. He has mm -hmm. the shot-making skills. But can he put everything together and figure it all out and utilize the skills that he does have to win with? Well, didn't you mention earlier when we were talking before the match that he had finished second in the world tournament over there? Yes, he did, and that's what I was told. Pat Fleming told me that, you know, and that's quite impressive, you know. I mean, that's an impressive thing there. Handle that combo real nice. Interesting shot coming up here. You have an overhead here. He can play this one of two ways. He can go this way. Or he can go this way. Whatever angle he likes best. Well, I that's think that's the do. two ball down here on the end rail, Billy. Is the two still on the table? Why? Well, then he's got a problem. He's got a problem unless... He can drop down and, between oh, them. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'd like to see that again. <laughs> well, later on and maybe in the match, we'll, we'll go back to that shot. That was really an incredible shot. And you're right. Once again, I forgot about the uh, ball. This time, the two ball. Well, your line was perfect, though. That's exactly the line he followed. He just dropped down between the 4 and the 10, which made it a lot tougher. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's I just couldn't imagine even envisioning that happening if I were at the table. But uh, not only did he envision it happen, he executed it as well. What a tremendous shot that was. The 5 ball, you know, is uh, snuggled up underneath the 8 and the 9. And I think he's going to want to come to the bottom side of it, isn't he? Shoot it up in the far corner. Can he uh, do yeah, that or in the side? It looks like he's going to have to attack the five from the bottom rail, like you said. Whether he does it in the side or in the corner, 
that remains to be seen, you know. So he's going to have to come up to, toward the five by hitting the bottom cushion. I don't know if he has a nice angle to go over that way. Maybe he's falling a little too straight on the four. See, he's forcing it, see? But he does have a shot on the five in the side. And he needs to get beyond the nine a little bit there, too, because he's got that maybe just a tad. But I think he's laying with another angle than that, looking at it on the overhead. Yeah, let's get an overhead here, if you will. Looks like he's a little awkward here. He can pocket the five in the side. The cue ball then figures to go somewhere over here, okay? Or he can play it, play with the cue ball short to over here. And just roll the shot? But, but you know, if I were he, I would, I would try to go over here and then back this way, like this. Let's see what he has in mind. If he has that angle, he looks like he's pretty straight, though. It does. If it's straight, he may have to settle for a longer shot. While he went in between the balls, he had the other angle, matter of fact. From our vantage point, it's very difficult at times to determine which angle he has. I thought he had to cut the five ball to his right, when in fact he was more straight on the five ball, and he forced it, kind of get slightly to his left. Well, it looks like he's got a pretty good difficult shot here on the six to get on the eight. You just take what you can get here. You know, that was a very difficult shot, and uh, he didn't treat it like it was. He didn't show it as much respect, I thought, that he should have. He had, he had to shoot over a ball, a shot that carried distance, and shooting over the ball just compounded the problem. He didn't really treat it with respect, in my opinion. I thought he shot it too quickly. So on that shot, would you have gone ahead and cinch the ball there instead of trying to force forward and come down? You have to, well... You have to be at the table, really, to make that determination, how, how well you feel at that time. I thought that as quickly as he shot it, he wasn't able to really feel how, how, how to shoot that shot. You know what I mean? You can't really process all that information right. in that short period of time. He, he, he tried to do that, and obviously he missed the ball. Well, that could be youth, too, though, a little bit, you know? Some of that finer edge coming off to get him even tougher. Sure, that all comes with experience, you know? You do that enough times, you start respecting certain things a little bit more, and you take a step back and say, huh, let me think this over now, okay? And when you start doing that, and that's when you pick up the finer points of the game in terms of using good discretion, when to do things a certain way and when not to. He sure did a nice job getting on the eight coming three rails around. Well, Coolio ended up missing the, uh, uh, the other shot, you know, which was like a, a gift. So after game number five, Ignacio only trails by one game, right. three games to two. You know, he has to be feeling pretty good about that because he knows as he's walking around the table that he's not playing his best game right now, but yet he only trails by one game. So therefore, he should feed off of that, okay, and go ahead and attack the balls and play a little bit more carefully using a little better discretion on matters, hopefully then he'll be able to show us, you know, the kind of a player that people feel he is from the, from the Philippines. He's, he's supposed to be their best young player. So well, far, he really hasn't shown me that. Right. I'm not saying he, he isn't, but he's going to show me a little bit more, and I'm sure he will. Well, Jeff Conway brought him over, and uh, Jeff was talking to me earlier in the day. And I said to him, I said, you know, I see a couple little green areas on him, not unlike what you were talking about with the experience of that shot, you know, taking a little more serious and taking a better look at it and maybe playing it differently. But um, I sure can't, you know, fault him in any way because he's sure handling a 10-foot table like, you know, nobody's business really. I mean, everybody's yeah. making some mistakes on this biggie. You're exactly right. You know, it isn't like he's playing like in his hometown, maybe in his local pool room on a four and up by nine where he's right. comfortable. He's <laughs> playing on a five by ten against probably, uh, which many people regard as the best player in the world. Right. So therefore, there's a lot of things going on, going on in his head and he's playing in front of the uh, all these people on, on Accustats. So therefore, a lot of things he could be thinking about as opposed to just playing comfortably like he normally does when he's back in the Philippines. So well, uh, let's see how he, he handles it as we go forward here. He made the 10 on the break there in the side, but, you know, the 10 ball doesn't count 
you know, we spot it back up in the Bigfoot 10 ball challenge. And, uh, you know, I always thought it'd be a good idea if a guy makes the 10, you know, on the break, why not give him ball in hand to start out with, you know, spot the ball back up, but give him ball in hand. Okay, here's what here's a here's the situation. The four ball and overhead, please. The four ball position here, the three ball position here. Going from the three to the four is a problem here. He would like to end up about right here with the cue ball. And in doing that, he can draw a cross table going in between this the six, six ball, ball in the in the side pocket, just like this here. But he has to be precise because he wants to be able to get down far enough on the four to simplify the shot, which is, let's see how well he's done here. Oh, he went two cushions across. I'm going to tell you something. Very intelligent shot. Now he's ended up with a much better angle than he would have had had he went one cushion across. Now he can do a couple different things on the four. He'll get a shot on the five. Once again, a little bit too quick. He's not really showing a lot of respect for these shots. You know, maybe that's just the style he plays, but I think he's going to have to slow up because that was a difficult shot. It should have been respected a lot more than I thought he gave it. Yeah, going two rails forward there really required a very precise hit from how close he was to this other side, other corner pocket. You know, when you follow a ball like that, uh, hitting it with a stroke, you're picking up a lot of speed with the object ball. And when you pick up speed with the object ball, with the angle that he had on the four ball yep. in relation to the pocket, that pocket shrinks. It shrinks a lot. So, therefore, <laughs> when you use that kind of speed with that type of a shot, it's got to be hit pure. And in order to hit it pure, you got to hit, hit it accurately. And when you shoot too quickly, you lose a little bit of accuracy. Well, and being that far away on a big table and four and a half inch pockets to begin with, shrinking that pocket any at all, <laughs> it doesn't make it very likely it's going to go. So you've got to respect that. I agree. Yeah. This guy at the table understands that. Well, he's got a nice angle here to just go back and forth and be on that six ball if he wants it in the corner. He's not happy with the results. He knew he mishit that shot. Now he's got a long shot on the six. He's got to draw it to the side rail in front of the eight and then back over. Okay, I mean, he can handle it, but it's certainly a lot more difficult than he wanted it to be. Let's see how well he does. Oh. Yeah, exactly what you said, Bill. You said he has a nice angle to go across the table, and he did have the good angle. He misjudged the speed of that shot. Yep. Once again, when you're playing on a 5 by 10 table, if you misjudge the speed of a shot, you're looking at a much longer shot that requires a more, you know, a, a, a better stroke. And when those things are problematic when that, when that happens, you know, distance and stroke. When you have to perform with distance and stroke, it's not that easy. He wants to go around the seven here. He doesn't want this hit. Okay. Slipped out a little bit. No, he's got a, he's left a lot of distance and an awkward angle for Aculio. So once again, Aculio's looking at a very long shot that carries a lot of distance. And also a very demanding shot because he's going to have to stroke it and control the cue ball off of it. And the angle that he's, he's been left in is not a very good angle. This is a big shot coming up and a very difficult one. He noticed the time he's taking. He's feeling the shot. Like you said before, he, can't, he, he got off the shot before, but he's feeling the shot and he's taking his time. He's getting, making sure he hits it accurately. And in doing all that, he still didn't put it down, but he gave it a lot of respect. That's what I like. You know, when a shot demands respect, he gets it to it, and he gives himself the best chance of succeeding because of that. And I agree. I think Ignacio here has got a pretty good layout, though. I mean, when you look at the balls now, they've gotten considerably easier all the way across the table, so it's just execution to get to the end, I'd imagine. So let's see how his focus is getting all the way out on a fairly routine table, even on a 10-footer.
I think he might have got a little straight there. He's got angle, but he's a little straighter than he would have liked. Nine's in the side pocket, and the ten's hanging, basically, so shouldn't be too difficult for him, <laughs> you think? <laughs> this will tie it up. That's one thing I've noticed over the years. When you give your opponent an easy layout like this, you build his confidence. Well, and yeah, that's kind of true. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, anytime you run out, you know, you, you feel good. It doesn't matter how simple the run out is. You always feel good if you run out. So, therefore, if you have jitters, if you're a little bit nervous and you, and you go to the table and run out, then you're less nervous and you're less nervous. And then hopefully you'll find that comfort zone that you really enjoy playing in because of, of your ability to run out and run out and run out. And then you start thinking about, oh, I can do this now. You know? So a couple of easy racks will bode well for his confidence. Regardless of the simplicity of, of, of the racks and how the balls are configured and wh how they're laying, if right. you run out, it's a confidence builder. And when you start running out more difficult racks, yeah. that's when you really start <laughs> feeling good about your game. Okay, And that's when you, you, know, you get to that, to that zone where you're like, you can feel like you can do anything. And, uh, of course, he hasn't arrived there yet in this match, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You know what? He who he reminds me of a little bit. I don't know. This may be a little premature. He kind of reminds me of C.J. Wiley. Okay. Really? Because, yeah, because C.J. is a, is a very a fast paced player. Excellent shot maker. Big stroke. Okay, and real aggressive. Right. He seems to have all those things in his game. He play, he doesn't take much time when he's at the table. He's got a big stroke, excellent shot maker, and he's very aggressive. So far, that's the player I think he reminds me of most. Well, that's quite a compliment coming from you because you saw C.J. play a bunch. Oh, and C.J. was playing well. I mean, he was just... He was so, so difficult to beat. You know, it took a player like a Reyes or a Bustamante to right. compete against him and beat him, you know. And even then, they didn't do it as often as you may think they could have or should have. C.J. Wiley was a competitor and a hell of a player. But uh, that's who he kind of reminds me of, C.J. Wiley. Quite a compliment. Says that in re -rack, break over. was an illegal rack. Okay? You break again. No what happened there? I don't know what happened. Maybe we'll get some sort of a an understanding of what happened down there from someone. <clears throat> well, if they don't award the game and it's just a re-break, that's interesting. Because I looked at the two ball and that was a fairly tough layout on the table. That wasn't going to be easy to work around. Even if a guy made a mistake, I don't know if I'd call it on that deal. Yeah, can we get some sort of a... Okay, we've just been informed from our producer that it was an improper rack and the balls weren't racked correctly. So it's not loss of a game. He'll just be re-racking with the balls in the appropriate order, which is the two and three on the corner. Okay, well, that's uh, the first I've heard about this because I haven't done commentary. Right. And I, I don't know, I'm not familiar with the rules right here. But the balls have to be racked specifically a certain way. He, the, the, obviously, with the one in front and the two and the three in the corner. And the, is that it? And the ten uh, in the middle, the ten, obviously. Course, <laughs> and ten in the center. Yeah. But that's it? Yeah. And they weren't racked like that, so therefore, it's not a foul. It was just uh, an oversight or whatever. Okay, well, the, the, see, once again, the cue ball positioned close to the center of the table, which, which I alluded to earlier in the match, that it decreases your chances of coming up with a shot on the, on the lowest ball on the table, this time being the one. Now, the two balls positioned near the 10 in the lower left-hand corner, the way, or the way we look at the table is obviously the uh, lower left-hand corner. But getting from the one to the two is not going to be that easy, Bill. A lot of traffic there in between the one and the two. He would like to draw the cue ball back to where it is now, which he's done. Yep. Now we'll go two cushions around the seven to attack the three. But what he would really like to do, let me have an overhead. I'm going to show you what he would really like to do. He would really like to end up with a shot on the three 
like over here somewhere, right there, to where he can pocket the three, and then he can move the nine out of there. I so like if he that. can move the nine out of there, it will open up the pocket for that five. Not that he needs to, but it will make the run out much more simple. The five nine's been the tough shot from the beginning of the rack. You're right. He would have liked to have had the angle on the three to move the nine. Let's see what he does here. Well, no need to do that. Obviously, there's enough room. Once again, if you will, I'll put it overhead. Obviously, there's enough room for him to just stick there and cut the five in and, and either draw it over here or over here. Either one. Playing position for the upper left-hand corner where the corner pocket he's standing in front of is much easier for position for the seven. But it may not be the best position for playing position for the eight off the seven. So he may go across table here like he's done. Now it's much easier to play position for the eight off the seven playing in this fashion. You like coming down the end rail here and coming back up? Oh, I do. I like that. You know, I don't know what kind of an angle he has. I think it's steep enough for him to be able to do that. I think the shot, the shot's very controllable. You go down to the bottom rail and back, oh, he went around. Wow, he must have been very steep with the angle because yeah. that shows me or it tells me that he couldn't have drawn it to the, to the end rail. Like I mentioned before, from our vantage point, it's very difficult at times to see what angle yeah. he actually has at the table. That was a very deceptive one right there. Him going around the tent certainly surprised me. Yeah, it didn't look like he'd go three rails around from the monitor. No. <laughs> but the one nice thing, both ways get the job done when you got the angle and you know what you're supposed to do. Right. And, but I, like I said before, you know, playing position for the seven the way he did right. made it easier for him to play position for the eight because obviously he gave him more um, more avenues to travel for position for the eight. Right. Had, he, had he played position for the seven in the corner pocket, he had to be pretty precise in order to stay around that area for the eight. So he played it the best way to play position for the eight as opposed to play position for the seven. I totally agree. I mean, it's nice to have that margin of error when you're coming into a position or an angle, either one, because if you've got a foot to deal with to get the cue ball in, it's way better than if you got three inches, obviously. And when you got to play tight for something, you got to be absolutely perfect where you want to be on the first ball. A lot so, of people miss that, it seems like. He played position that favored running out as opposed to playing position that favored getting to the next ball. Yep. So therefore, that's what he did. He played position that gave him a better chance of running out as opposed to playing position that gave him the best chance of falling good for the next ball. And sometimes that's a, that's a common mistake players have. They choose the route that gives them the best chance to fall on the next ball right. instead of choosing the route that gives them the best chance of running out. Getting all the way out. That's yep. right. Well, another thing I've noticed too, Billy, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but, you know, we're at 3-3 three, three now or 4-3 now. And uh, when you look at the uh, the way the ball's been going in these games, they haven't really got hooked as much so far as what I've seen in some of the previous matches, you know, with their position. So both players are moving that cue ball pretty well. And like you mentioned before, that when you're playing on a 5 by 10 table, it's more difficult to hook yourself because there's a lot more area yeah. and balls are spread more open. Now, that's the first time he went forward with the cue ball. He misstruck that break that time. I don't know. Did he pocket anything? Three, six, no. nine. He didn't pocket anything. And Arculio steps to the table without a shot. But that was the first time in the match where, that Ignacio had broken the balls where the cue ball went forward. I think he mishit the cue ball there. But let's get back to the match here. The one ball's position... Yeah, kind of close to the corner of pocket, cross table. That's where the seven ball is. So he, so he can push down that way, you know, because he can't bank it. The seven ball precludes him from banking it. But it's a very difficult push. Let's take. Where is the two ball? Okay, the two. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised to see him kick it to one here. Let's get an overhead. 
considering the position of the two ball here, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go ahead and kick at the one to try to pocket it. I think he has a better chance of winning this game if he does that or if he pushes for a, for a kick or even a masse as opposed to allowing Agnacio at the table to play safe off the one. I don't like playing for him playing safe off the one. He's really, he doesn't know what to do. I, I push for a kick here. Or that's what he's, he, he pushed for a kick. Or he could have, the, the one ball is in a big ball position. Reddy Matthews gave that label a big ball position. I'll describe right. what that is. When a ball is about a quarter of an inch off of a rail, close to a pocket, it's in a big ball position, meaning that you can hit rail first, then ball. You can hit ball, and you can hit in between rail and ball and still make the ball. So you can make the ball a number of different ways, which gives you a better chance of pocketing the ball. That's referred to as the big ball position. Now, he, he, he pushed out for the kick, which was a very good, you know, a choice because Ignacio obviously passed it. No, he took the shot. No, he but, took it, yeah. Yeah, he took the shot, but he had to execute it in order to get good results. So there, but he, it, it wasn't a shot where Ignacio, all he had to do was throw his stick at it to get good results. He had to execute it well. Dennis really in a nice shot, but... Wow, he's going wow, to end up in, in, good, in good shape here. I think the cue ball might have leaked out just a tad. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of strategies here playing with, with you know, between upper echelon players. They really have, have to be brought out you know, why, how these players think and what's available, you know. May not be true with lesser players, but with upper echelon players, you know, all these things, you know, they have to be understood. Well, I like your first read on the rack. I think that was a good opportunity on that first shot to go ahead and kick at the one. And if you make it, you're out. I mean, you know, at least well, you got a shot on the two, you know what I mean? You're out of that predicament, I'll say. See, let's just put it this way, Bill. Shooting that kick shot to pocket the one was a much better choice than pushing out and allowing your opponent to see the one. Yep. The only other option I like was pushing out for a kick, which he ended up doing. Well, when Ignacio made that good hit, brought the cue ball down table, Dennis gets hooked. He's got a worse hook than he left for himself on the push out. So Ignacio really made the right choice there mentally as well. Well, that's, an, uh, that's another uh, issue there. In other words, that Let's just put it this way. Oculio made the right decision pushing out where he did. Ignacio made the right decision in taking it because of his skills. Right. Okay? It wasn't something that, that he could have done 90% of the time. If you push out, if Oculio would have pushed out and allowed Ignacio to see the one, Ignacio would have executed that shot 90% of the time and got good results. Right. But Oculio pushed out to a position where he forced Ignacio to accept the kick where he may have only had a 40% success rate as opposed to a 90% success rate. So Oculio did his job and so did Ignacio. That's the way it is. Well, Dennis is in another spot where he needs to do a job again. <laughs> That's a little tough to get on that ball from here. And when you watch these upper echelon players play, you know, you, you, should, you develop a good feel on the correct things to do, and then you appreciate the skills that they have to, you know, to circumvent and to do things to, to, to compete against what their opponents are trying right. to do to them. Well, and watching two Filipinos like this, you know, hook each other on kicks, that's a real story, too, because you know there's a lot of good play over there because these shots are in their repertoire. They just reach in the bag and get the one they need next. That two-rail kick right there was really nice. Difficult shot here. Well, he handled it quite nicely. I, I thought that he hit it with real nice speed. He killed the ball nicely. He's saying to himself, should I play the four on the side, play the five in the corner, pass the seven? I'm shooting into a very small pocket in the side, or I can play it in the corner. Let's take another look at it. This is the first time he's given the shot a lot of, a lot of respect here. Let's see what he does. Okay, that's what he did. He shot it into a smaller pocket, but he respected the shot that time. He you did. notice he backed up off the shot? Yep. I like what he did there. He's walking around the table, much more deliberate now in his, uh, in the way he's going around the balls now. He's making sure that 
you know, which 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 kind of like indicates to me uh, that he's starting to play, be more comfortable at the table because he's thinking. Whenever you shoot quickly, you're not thinking, meaning that maybe you're a little nervous or something. You know what I mean? Right. And you want to, you're just shooting too quickly. But when you start walking around the table and being a little more careful, you know, on what you're doing, that means that you're thinking a little bit better. Yeah, and his speed was just a little off there. I've seen everybody miss these shots when they come spinning out of the corner. You his know, it's speed was a little, a little more longer. than a little off. Yeah. It was quite a bit off. Now he's going to have to stroke it or, 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 or take it. Yeah, yeah, good stroke. I like that much better. I like that better because it's the eight ball is behind the nine, and you right. had to get fairly good on the seven to assure coming up with a decent shot yeah. on the eight. By cinching it and not moving the cue ball, you know, he diminishes his uh, chances of coming up with a good shot off the off the seven to the eight. And that's why he played it the best way to run out as opposed to the best way to get to the next ball. So good he point. played it the best way to run out, to which you'll see these top players do that. So that's a little bit, of, that's a little page out of their book I think you guys should pick up on. Play the shot that gives you the best chance of running out. Play it the correct way that gives you the best chance of running out as opposed to the best chance of getting on the next ball. Well, the other thing there, too, when he played that three rails, he had to miss a ball. And uh, he didn't even come close. Just drilled it in the side like he did that nine. And Ignacio is going to take a two-game lead in this match, Bill. Five games to three. Yeah, eight racks underway, and we pretty much look like we're seeing something that we sort of halfway expected to see matches and over, of course, because you got a Corleo sitting in the chair there, so it could happen differently at any given moment. But Ignacio is showing some talent. Yeah, at one time in this match, he was trailing three to two when I mentioned to you that he has to be feeling pretty good, right. only trailing by one game three to two, considering how he precipitously made a couple mistakes. Right. But yet, he only trailed by one game because Arculio returned to favor by missing a couple balls maybe he shouldn't have missed. So now you have to be feeling pretty good. That gives you more time to get back into the, your comfort zone, get, to get back into the match and start playing your game, okay? And it looks like he has a real good game to, that he can display to us. And uh, since then, since trailing 3-2, to two, and now he's won three consecutive games. He's gone ahead 5-3. to three. Yep. You know, and there's a probably a lot more good stuff he has to show us uh, going forward here. He's starting to get a little more comfortable. Every every game, he's starting to get a little more comfortable. Well, and if he does get real comfortable, you know, we aren't saying this is going to happen, but if he should end up winning this match, that's a big step because beating Orcolo, you know, you, in my estimation... It's Famboning or Ocolo that are the favorites in this at this point. And uh, if Ignacio wins there, if he sleeps well tonight, you know what I mean? Things could go well tomorrow for him. Yeah, I definitely feel, I agree with that. It's a hurdle that, that, that we get over, that once we get over that hurdle, we feel better about, you know, all other hurdles that, that we're confronted with. So, therefore, our job is much easier than after that. And just like I said earlier, that even when you run out, you, your, game, your game goes up. It doesn't matter. And when you beat good players, your game really goes up. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's all about winning, running out, building confidence. If you have the tools and the understanding how to play, that doesn't mean you're going to succeed. Right. Once you start winning, once you start running out, then you have the, the presence of mind and the understanding to use those tools to succeed because it's a much easier thing to do if you can run out and if you can win. Look at this break. I mean, one on the side, two laying in the corner up there. The three is the only ball that's even slightly difficultly placed. The four and the five up on that end of the table and the six and the seven, or the six and the eight, excuse me, down here. Ten as well, so... Pocket the combination here, leave the three ball hanging, and uh, leave yourself angled to get on the four, and you should be in good shape. Well, not so quick, my friend. <laughs> the six to the eight it may appear like it's like a throw in, but it's not. 
you still have to play pretty good on the sixth. Now, once again, he shot a little too quickly because you have to understand the way the ball was positioned in that pocket, the nine ball, there was a chance you could pocket both balls. Right. So you had to figure out, okay, what if that happens? Okay, so I, I like going straight across table, giving yourself a shot at both the corner pocket if the ball didn't fall right. and the four if it did. By going higher as opposed to lower on the four. Another thought might have been to shoot the three ball a little bit rail first at a very slow speed to trap the three ball there when he pocketed the nine. Oh, yeah, yeah you could have done that too. But you know, one uh, pocket thinking. But sometimes it's hard to hit that ball that softly because if, if the other ball falls behind it, now you have no shot on the four. Yeah, I mean, that's true too. Okay, this is the area here I, I said you have to be pretty precise because of the position of the eight. The right. position of the eight says to me that it only goes in the corner. You can't play it for the side. So therefore, playing shape on the seven, you have to be fairly precise. And I think he's done a good job. Yes, he has. This is rack number nine, and all of a sudden, this guy from the Philippines, this young lad, I would say, from the Philippines, it looks like he's going to take a three-game lead in this match at six games to three. Nicely done. Yes, Jeff yes. Ignacio. Yeah, if CJ's out there listening, I hope he takes that as a great compliment that you would compare him to him. <laughs> Listen, we, uh, you know, CJ Wiley was, 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 was uh, regarded as the number one player in the world at one time. In spite the, despite the fact that he didn't win that many majors. Right. But he, but he finished second and third and second, and he, and he put in a win every occasionally. Okay, he didn't string any wins like the Archer and Varner and Siegel and Hopkins, I mean, not Hopkins, and Hall and Strickland, but he was always up there, one, uh, two, three, two, three, you know? But that, his style of play, he was very similar, in my opinion, to Ignacio's, you know? He was a super good shot maker, had a good stroke, a real powerful stroke, and broke the balls quite well, too. Right. CJ will never tell you that he broke the balls well, but I thought he did. Right. Okay? This guy does. Yeah, he definitely does. <laughs> this guy does. Look at that cue ball. Yep. Look how those balls explode. Tell me about it. If you have that type of, a, of ability off the break, you're going to beat a lot of players. And if you, and, and if you have the tools that Ignacio has in that break... Yeah. Now you have to have the mindset. You have to have the understanding. You have to have the, the, the ability to use the good discretion at the table. And if you can put all that together, he's going to be very difficult to beat. Well, and I, I agree with that assessment for sure because I had a young guy not too long ago ask me about, you know, giving him lessons. And I said, you know what? Your mechanics are good enough that I'm not going to teach you anything but one thing, and that's how to think. Because from one level to the next, it's all about how you look at the table. And experience with these guys is a whole other world as well. And, and there's nothing better than learning from experience. And when you make a mistake, that's an experience. You've got to learn the lesson life teaches you. Just like you've got to learn the lessons the pool, ta the pool table teaches you when you're on it. When you make the same mistake over and over and over again, you're not learning. Right. You're not learning. You're not progressing. Okay. So the experience you're getting is you're not using it in the right way. Right. Okay? When you find yourself failing, figure out why you failed and correct that problem. That's when you pick up the experience that you need to go forward. I totally agree. That's a very nice shot right there if he didn't hit the six. And it still works with the angle he's got anyway. He's still okay. Just a little tougher shot here. Yeah, he would like to go around the five and play position for end up fairly straight on the five. And in doing that, he's going to have to get close to the five off that second cushion here. He missed it. He missed boy, the four. Oh See, he, he still shoots, in my opinion, too quickly. Right. That's my opinion. I think it worked out oh, not too bad for him. I don't think Aquilio can see the four. No, he's got to turn it. That's what he was looking at. And plus, he's leaning over the table, so that's going to make that daggone near impossible. And he really doesn't have a good cross-corner kick at it to pocket it. Because it's the five ball. 
Well, he hit it pretty good. Notice the position of the cue ball down the other end of the table. He got nice separation, so therefore he really got pretty much what he wanted to get from that shot. Now, Ignacio steps to the table. He's probably saying to himself, you know, I can cut this four in and I can get to that side rail and end up with natural position for the five. And if I hit it thinly enough and I miss it, I overcut it, it'll rebound to the short rail and I won't really leave much. I think it's a good gamble. I look for him to cut it in. Do you go up and down the table here or three rails? I look for him to go to the side rail. It's like he's trying to go to the side rail like he did there. Yep. That's the route I take because that's conducive to the side spin that I'm putting on the cue ball. Right. And also, it helps me hit the four ball more thinly, which he's done, so it ends up on the short rail, which it did. But he hit it too thinly, and he allowed the cue ball to get too far up table, giving Orculio a little better shot than he wanted to give him, but it didn't work wow. out for Orculio. No. No, Dennis hung the ball. Certainly a lot of difference the way Aculio's playing in this match in comparison to how he played against Bartram. Yep. I don't know how to figure that out, you know, because I, I just don't. Because I, I know Aculio is imperturbable in a, in a sense that it doesn't, you know, it takes a lot to disrupt or disturb him or to right. break his concentration. I don't think it's uh, what's transpired here has done that. I just can't. I don't understand why Coolio is missing the balls that he's missing. I just don't understand it. I'm not going to try to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if I could figure that out, I'd be a better player. Well, you know, when a guy's firing back at you pretty good and uh, it's a younger player... You know, sometimes that does weaken your knees just a little bit. Yeah, I can't disagree with that, you know. A little more pressure. There's pressure with, with great players playing lesser players Yep. because they're expected to win. Yep. So, therefore, when you're expected to win and you don't win, you take more of a hit as opposed to your yep. credibility or your rep. But when you're playing players that you don't figure to win against, you know, if you start playing well, you build off of that because that, that, that's you know, a lot of adrenaline you can feed off of that. And gives you that momentum. Yeah. So maybe uh, you could be right about that. But in the meantime, Ignacio, seven, or Coolio, three. After at one point, Ignacio was trailing two games to three. He's won five consecutive games. And look at the TPA, the tournament performance average, Billy. 844 for Ignacio, and Ocolo's down to 750 which is respectable in one way on a 10-foot table, but not near good enough to win these matches on a 10-footer. Yeah, but let's not count out Aquilio. Will Even not. though he's, shoot, he's shooting a 750 of at least 100 points below his expected speed. Right. We all know who he is. Oh, yeah. We're not guessing who we thought he was. We know who he is. Okay, oh, yeah. so therefore he has a shot to get back into this match because of who he is. Let's see if he shows up and who he is as opposed to who he's becoming in this match. Well, he look at him. It. He looks a little frustrated in the chair. He can do it. You can do it. <laughs> oh, he can do it. You don't get your picture on that wall if you can't do oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he has proven a countless number of times that this picture belongs up there. And well, the, and the fella at the table now racking the balls, he's the one that has to earn it. And so far in this match, he's earning it. And we'll get another look at this motion. One thing I was getting ready to say is, um, in 2012, Orcolo and uh, Van Boning played in the finals of the Open. And... Uh, this kid's body movement, his movement on the break looks a lot like Shane's. I don't know if he's emulated Shane, but, I mean, watch how he raises up and comes into it with a longer lever, you know, on his break arm. Boy, he could, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if, what a break. I, I, he's, gorgeous, got, isn't it? he's got the best break in the tournament. From what I've seen so far, right. he's got the best break. And I, and I mean he's got the best break. I hear what you're saying. That's bar none. I got it. 
And when you're playing on a 5x10, if you can open the balls up like that, <laughs> that's a big edge. That's a big edge. It's nice to be 20 there on that's that end of it, edge. isn't it? Got to do some traveling here. Got a few interfering balls as well. You know, let's, let's have an overhead here. Uh, you know what he's looking to do? He's looking to go over here. Uh, let me let me, let me, re, let me redo this. He's looking to go over here and then go over here. Now he's going the short way. Better angle. I actually didn't think he had the angle to come in short for the three. He would have liked to end up straight on the three, but he wasn't able to do that. Now he's got to, like, revise his plan. He may have to draw it back for the four in the side, which he's pointed at the tip of his cue stick where he needs to be. He like to spin with left-hand English off that side rail, which could put the cue ball straight in on the four in the side. That's where he wants to end up. Pretty nicely done, I'd say. Yeah, that'll be fine. He's a little thinner on the four than he would have liked. I think he might have shot that with a little respect, like what you said. He didn't draw all the way over the rail and spin out. You know, he just kind of slugged it over there a See, little I bit. See, I kind of like drawing to the rail now because that, that way he wouldn't have to do what he just did. Not that he right. couldn't handle it, which he's obviously has showed us that he could. Spinning out two cushions around the table out of that corner, I should say, to end up for a shot on the five. But I like coming off that side rail off the three and then getting straight on the four using English to uh, watch out. Oh, boy. Okay, now Aquilio trailing, trailing seven games to three, looking at a five-game uh, string of games by, by Ignacio, has a chance to get a little closer here. This will be a start for him, at least an opportunity for a start to get back into this match. Well, he definitely wants to bloody Ignacio's nose here, for sure. And that's not unlike that rack that he left for Ignacio that started all this, you know, where he had the four wide open balls and off he went. Now we'll see if Dennis does the same. Well, trailing by three games. okolo has got to make a good break here, I believe. Just the one on the side. Made the nine. And he made the three ball. Wow. But I believe he's hooked on the one. Push. Push out. Hmm. Where do you like to push here? Okay, let's take a look at it here. Isn't that, notice, notice how the balls are grouped together here. He didn't break them nearly as well as Ignacio breaks them. You can see the results of the, uh, of the break. Pocketed the six ball. Left Ignacio long. Well, he let them in not only long, he let them with a bad angle to play shape for the two if he accepts the shot on the one. So this shot says, don't take me, has, has it written all over it unless you play a safety here. I kind of like this. Let's have an overhead. I kind of like this. I kind of like backing the one into the eight, sending the cue ball here, here, and down this way over here, or possibly even over here if, he, if you can get it that way. If I take this shot, which I would take this shot, and I would shoot it in that fashion, I would play good cue ball here. So he opted to go have to go for the pocket. Notice, I mean, <laughs> very difficult shot to take is shooting it yeah. in the fashion that he shot it in. Because you're asking a lot to do here for yourself. You are asking a lot of yourself with uh, the choice he made.
Yeah, I think the safety was the better choice there. I agree. He's going to play the one off the four here. See, he played the one off the four. He allowed the cue ball to get away from him because sometimes when we're confronted with situations where there's a possibility that we could do something good, and if we don't, we can still kind of like play a good safety, we get caught in between those thoughts as opposed to thinking about doing something uh, locked down. He had a lockdown shot on that one ball to freeze him on that seven. No chance of Ignacio stepping to the table with a shot. No chance. Right. But yet, he saw the possibility of the carom, the one off the four, and said, if I make this, I'm out. That's what he did. I thought he made a bad decision. Obviously, he did make a bad decision when he shot, when he shot that shot. He didn't really think it out well. Well, we're getting up near the end of the match as well, so the pressure's only going to get greater if Ignacio should get out here and stretch it to a four-game lead. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to buy that, the pressure, but the pressure's going to get greater, obviously. But I'm not going to buy that that, that should have influenced him or, or, or created some problems in his thinking. He knows better than that. He knows better than that. And if you ask him why he did what he did after the match, he'll say, I made a mistake. Gotcha. I guarantee you he will, because that was a mistake. So you, when, you, when you had that type of a situation, you said to yourself, if I'm going to opt to play the one off the four here, I'm going to make sure I hold that cue ball, okay? He was caught in between thoughts, and he forgot about the, controlling the cue ball. He shot it precipitously there, and he got the results he figured to have gotten, and it, what they weren't good. And I know I'm coming down pretty hard. Well, no, I think that's pretty. Is. I think it's pretty lenient for that particular shot. You know, I think he could have hit the one ball a little harder off the four, and if he missed it and he went to the side rail, the long rail, he come downs on the end rail and he's still hooked. You know, so he missed at least half of that shot as well. He had the opportunity to get safe. He and didn't play process the ball. it. Yeah, you know, I see, agree. With you. There's a difference. In other words, if you process something, that means you have an understanding of it. If you're in the process of it, you don't have an understanding. He was in the process of it, and he shot. Right. He got caught in between thinking. Once you think something out, then you've processed it. He was caught in between that, and he shot it, and he forgot all about the cue ball. Look at this shot. Coming he's right down on top of the He's going to end up, maybe, yep, he's going to end up with a shot. He got straight in and towards the force it was spin, but he was coming right on that angle, right on top of the eight. Does he go two rails here? Well, that all depends on how he feels. He go one rail straight up or two rails. He could he, he could have even drawn it out of the corner with a draw two rails. You know that was probably the the third choice, but 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 all of those options were available. Well, Ignacio takes an eight to four lead. Yeah, and I was really surprised that Aquilio, after uh, getting that gift in that preceding game, you know, w which allowed him to get a little closer to the lead at that seven games to four, I thought that he was going to get back into this match. But after seeing him do that, I have my doubts. <laughs> I really do. I have my doubts. Well, look at the break percentage. Both of them are very high. I mean, compared to what they've been. Oh, that's total performance average. Excuse me. You know, Ignacio's still down there. And look at that big string right there. Let, let, let's throw up those break percentages again on the screen, if you will. I'd like to take another look at that. Well, these are the break percentages that'll come up, but that was actually the TPA. And there it is right there. Yep. Okay, the total breaks, Ignacio eight, he pocketed how many balls? How many balls did Ignacio pocket on the break? Well, successful breaks, that's what we're going for, was six. His total breaks have been eight. Do we have a stat on the total number of balls that were pocketed on the break? I'm not sure we do right now. That's okay. just for successful breaks. I think that's breaks. an interesting stat to have, okay? Right. Maybe we'll incorporate that into, uh, into our stats. Because when you start pocketing and averaging two balls on the break, right. 1.5 or 2, yeah. I think that's pretty impressive. I think that's significant. You know, that'll answer... That, that, that'll give you the answer to a lot of things on why players advance. If you can pocket an average of 1.5 or two balls on the break playing 10 ball, you're going to advance. If, you know, and this Buddy, is what, you got me that's what up. he's been doing. 
Absolutely. And you got me standing up behind as a believer because I agree with that assessment totally. It's a big deal to make, you know, when you're playing 10 ball, especially make two balls on the break where you're only looking at eight balls on the table. Huge difference than making one ball. Uh, now, once again, I think this is the second time in this match that he has allowed the cue ball to go forward, you know, which is quite surprising to me because I think that he's a tremendous breaker, and not only in, the, in terms of power, but also controlling that cue ball, which we've seen him do several times. We put that, he put the cue ball in the center of the table after opening the balls. Right. I think that's the second time in this match, I said that's his ninth break, that the cue ball went forward. And because it went forward, Okula does not have a shot on the one ball. And you're right, that is, he did do it twice, and that's the second time Rokolu has been hooked behind it. I don't, let's have an overhead. I don't know if he has this shot, okay? He may have this shot here. And the cue ball will then go here and over here. He may have that shot. I'm not sure if he has it. Well, that's not the shot. <laughs> That's not the shot. Maybe he mishit my shot poorly, but I doubt it. No, I think you called the right shot. Go two rails with the cue ball and bring it up behind one of those balls on the side rail. Take the but one you, ball yeah, back downstream. You got you to uh, control the one ball, though. And when you're talking about young guys, players that are fairly young with young guys, with, with really good cue technique, good cue men, they hit the cue ball where they want to, He's supposed to execute that shot well. So what do you think, Billy? With Dennis four games behind, does he shoot here or does he play safe? I don't think the score should interfere with your choice of shot. Okay. You shoot the shot that gives you the best chance of winning the game regardless of the score. Okay. Do you think by playing a shot to, that carries less of a percentage of winning the game is a better shot to win the, win the match if you're trying by a significant number? I doubt it. Personally, I don't. I doubt it, okay? But what I, it does do, it gives you a less chance of winning the match. Anytime <laughs> you shoot a shot that gives you a less chance of winning a game has to give you a less chance of winning the match. I like that. <laughs> So, whenever you got a shot, regardless of the score, you shoot the shot that gives you the best chance of winning the game. And that's a good rule. But I think you feel the pressure a little bit when you're down by four games. You're getting up near the end of the match, and it's kind of like in one pocket when you get that shot where you got to go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think that mentality is human nature. Well, it could be. You could be right, you know. Uh, Look at this. Oh, boy. And he's going to be a little bit trapped on that five. No, oh, he's, uh, he's behind the five. Yeah. Well, he's got the whole table to work with, so, if, you know, he might be able to turn the ball. <laughs> I I would never do this, but. This is a These guys game. do this pretty well. They massay around stuff pretty well. This is going to be a, a heck of a shot coming up if he's able to do well with it because that's what it's going to take for him to do well. He's jumping the ball. No, kicking it. That's the right thing. Good. Just didn't get by the seven ball. Okay, Dennis, you're stepping to the table. Even though you trail by eight games to four, you have a, a, a decent shot. You're at the table. Let's see how well you do here. Nicely struck ball. See, he hit the outside of the pocket to the left-hand side of the pocket and created the angle that he did to play shape for the three. He sacrificed the accuracy of the shot somewhat to get to where he needed to be for the three. So that opening shot wasn't as easy as it appeared. He had to cheat the pocket, which he did. Now he's in good line to run the remaining balls. Looks like the six goes by the eight, two in the corner there. Yeah, the six definitely goes by the eight. <laughs> yeah, and he's in pretty good line. He should go two cushions, narrowly missing the nine of the second cushion. But he must pocket the ball. This is a very similar shot than the one Ignacio missed. See, and he's going to go two cushions around the nine. And, and he stayed on the correct side of the six. It, it'll keep him in line for the seven. 
as opposed to taking him away from the seven. Nicely done there. It's close to the seven. A little bit of a stretch. No problem. Balls are in the open. No problems out there. The only problem he has is the score. Eight games to four. Like he's uh, drawn a little bit closer, he's narrowed the gap to eight games to five. But but uh, back when the score was seven seven to uh, to four, and it looked like he should have gotten out, that he yep. missed, and then it went to eight to four. He can't afford to have that happen anymore because no. the 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 longer uh, the the deeper we go into a match, the more these errors cost you. Now it's eight to five. Okay, we're racing to 11. This is not like a race to 30 or 25 or whatever. This is a race to 11. Eight to five. He can't afford to have any more misses and expect to win this match. Well, and he did play safe. You know, that's what I was alluding to when he had that shot on the one ball. And you said the shot to win the game is more important than thinking about the game score in the match. And I totally agree. And he played safe there. So... There's proof of what you were saying right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to play the best shot to win the game. Whatever shot it is, if you feel that's the best shot to win the game, that's the shot you play. you got to ignore the score of the match. The match, score of the match means absolutely nothing when you're playing a game. See, he's not getting the, the action off the break that Ignacio gets. For him to surmount this lead, it's going to be quite difficult. Right, I agree. So therefore, therefore, therefore with, uh, under, with that understanding, he's going to have to get fairly lucky to have an opportunity late in this match to win. He's going to have to force Ignacio to make mistakes. And the only way he showed success at that was early in the game when he was getting the best of some safeties there. He got fortunate on this break that he's at least a little hooked on the four. He's got to turn the ball. But the problem with that thinking, <laughs> the problem with that thinking, it's not in the thinking itself. I do agree with what you're saying. The problem with that way of thinking is that we're playing 10 ball. We're not playing one pocket sure. where you could, where you can... Put your opponent in tough situations because you have the time to do it. When you play, when you play short rack games like nine ball and ten ball, you know there's a lot less decision making for you to do those things than there is playing one pocket. So therefore, more things are rely on on the lock factor and how the balls open up and right. what happens. You know, as opposed to making things happen, you really can't make things happen that, re that often playing nine ball and ten ball. You have to give. Uh, you have to shoot what the table gives you. Do you feel like the ten foot table, though, kind of you know slows the game up on the break a little bit? I mean, not with Ignacio's break for sure, but you know, like with Corlo's break because he's only making a ball. You know what I mean? In the side or whatever, and you know that's what I was kind of alluding to with playing the safes and hoping he could you know get him in a position where he makes some mistakes. But Ignacio obviously you know pushed right there, and Dennis gave it back. But you know. Tough to call. I think you're right. It's not going to be something that's easy for Dennis to surmount at this point. <laughs> He's going to miss this ball. No, nope, yeah. he didn't miss it. I liked the way he shot. Even though he gave up a shot on the one, I like what he did with the speed of the shot. Had he hit that one ball a little more thickly, then he would have ended up behind the 10. Yeah. I like what he was, the way he was thinking there. So therefore, he was, uh, he was thinking well. When he opted to shoot it with the speed that he shot it with. This is a very difficult shot, too, to end up with a shot on the two. Unless he goes into the uh, eight ball and just stays there. Good call, Billy. Oh, but now he's, he's gotten off the rail far enough to dig down a little bit, elevate, dig down. Three balls positioned near the side pocket. Yeah. 
he would like to get a little further off the rail with the cue ball than it is in now after pocketing the two he would like to have a little bit of an angle he doesn't want to end up straight in on the three and Dennis is exemplifying that you know determination and experience you're talking about too absolutely taking good looks at these this shot demands a lot of respect not only because it's a difficult shot because he has to get good on this next ball and he has a difficult shot He went off the rail a little further, which he's gotten. Now he has the ability to do quite a few things. He can play position for the four in the same pocket. He pockets the three in, or he can go cross corner playing position for the four in the adjacent pocket. Now let's take a look at the five. Mm, five grouped in there. I don't know if it's available in any pocket. He did just look at it a moment ago. So mm. I think it goes by the six, but it has to close the pocket a little bit, does the Interesting. six. Big shot coming up here, Bill. Not much room for the five to pass that six. And he has to get back where the cue ball is now. See where the cue ball is now? That's where he wants to be when he shoots the five. If he could draw it to the rail and then toward the five, he probably would opt to do that. But that cut shot carries a little more risk. I don't know if he's willing to sacrifice that. I think he's going to do just what you call, Billy. There it is. That showed some heart right there. But he's not out of the woods yet because of the position of the 10. Okay. He can't allow the 10 to, uh, to manage the cue ball here. He wants to draw away from the 10. And, or else he follows through the shot and, and caroms off the 10. I don't know. This is a very difficult shot. It doesn't look like there's any margin for error with this shot. He has, wants to draw around the 10 and with good speed. Very difficult shot. Very Oh, that's a very difficult shot. He didn't even have that shot available. That's why he drew to the side rail, and he ended up with a shot on the six. That carries a lot of problems. Cue ball position close to the rail, shooting into a small pocket. This is a, not an easy shot. Yeah, the balls are forcing him to struggle through this rack a little bit. He really can't get total control of it just yet. No, he can't, but if he does, big confidence builder here. Big shot. Big shot coming up. Oh that was a boy. big shot. You know, the rack was a complex rack. A lot of problems out there. Had he pocketed that ball, he would have made his way through the rack. Trailing eight games to five, like I mentioned earlier, he can't afford to miss another ball and expect to win this match. He missed that ball. I don't think he's going to win this match. Yeah, he's definitely not at the one mistake mark yet, but he's on close to it, and it will be two games after this is done, I'm afraid. You know, Ignacio's only going to need two. And I'm sure he'll back cut this in the corner, don't you think? Yeah, he'll... Because yeah. the nine ball's in the way going the other way, I believe. He can just... I think I think, I think, think he can kill it. You know, I, I don't... Uh, if, he, if he does anything, he may go into the eight, but I think he can kill it. If you he like that kill better it, than stunning and coming straight across? If, no, I go into the eight here. I wouldn't come straight across like that. I go into the eight just like that. Gotcha. No. See, that's mm. the natural angle with that shot going toward the eight. Right. Why not take it? Because when, anytime you shoot a shot naturally, you increase your chances of pocketing the ball. Right. So, therefore, shoot it natural, and you know pretty much where you're going to hit on the eight, kind of. Right. That should be good enough. And considering the position of the seven, you could have mishit the eight slightly and still ended up with a shot on the seven. Gotcha. So therefore, that wasn't the main problem. The main problem was staying in control of the table, shooting it the natural way. That gives you your best chance of getting out. And the eight ball got in a little bit of a tough spot, but he yeah. handled that what very nicely. What are you going to do? I mean, you can't, uh, you, you can't anticipate the eight ball getting hung up on a, on a corner or something. Right. You know what I mean? When you start thinking about stuff like that, you're never going to run out. He handled that really nicely getting on. Sure, it, I like the way he did. I like the way he handled it. I like the I like the, the way he looked at it, and I like the way he executed it. And I'm certainly sure he likes all, that all as all that stuff as well. And all of a sudden, uh, we, Nacho now has uh, a 
a four-game lead once again. Nine games to four. So, <laughs> you know, oh. Coolio has had his chances in this match. Absolutely. He has had his chances. I don't know why or what happened to him. Maybe it's a little bit of what you said, uh, playing uh, a young player, maybe uh, kind of intimidating in the sense that he's expected to win. And, right. Uh, or for, I don't know. I don't know. But one thing's for sure. happened. I think for sure he's climbing up a pretty steep rock face to win this match if Okolo comes back and does. It's straight up in the air from here. And don't think for one minute. Let's get another picture of Okolo in his chair. And don't think for one minute that Okolo doesn't want to win this match oh, yeah. more than this kid. But here's my question for you. You got to face this break, this kid's break. If he breaks him like he was breaking when he was breaking him good, and the cue ball pops up and sets, it could be see you later by right now. <laughs> well, there's no question that uh, Ignacio has the break to just close the door on him. That's no question. That's one of the. That's what's make. That's what makes him, or one of the things that makes him as feared as as he is. It's his I agree. big break. Anytime you carry that type of a break to the table, that's what Strickland had in, in his younger days. Absolutely. Okay? Uh, you know, Strickland had, he was an explosive player. David Howard, an explosive player. <laughs> Guys that had those big breaks, man, they were feared. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, once you stop his break, then you got to stop him. And to stop both of them, the break and him, it's very difficult. And there's another good break, Billy. Let's see where that three ball winds up. The four and five tied up, though. And the two behind the seven or the six, whatever it is. Yeah. So we really can't take a chance of opening up the four and five on the, off the one. The three, the four, and the five are congested at the other end of the table. The three does not pass, so he can't open up the four and the five off the three. He's looking to go, or here's what he's looking to do. The overhead. This is the thought that he had. Okay, he had this thought. One Kubo hit the five out there, boom, and he said, "Oh, he backed off of that." But he had that thought. Okay, he had that thought of opening up the five, setting the Kubo in between the three and the cushion, playing position for the two. Because when he walked over there, he pointed his Q-tip at the side, at the point of the rail that he needed to hit to execute it. He didn't like it, and I used good judgment. Oh, boy, that's a little unfortunate, maybe. Uh, well, he didn't scratch, so therefore, you know. Yeah, it was close. He's still, he's still in the game. And he can make the nine here if he really feels like he yeah, has to. Uh, he could. I don't know how deeply the nine is. It looks like from, the, from our monitor that that may be an option, which obviously it was. Oh, it, it was questionable. Now what do you do here? He's looking at the three to see if it passes. I don't know. If it passes, it doesn't pass by much. And it certainly doesn't pass by enough for him to try to do something with the four and the five. He may be able to bank the four across corner if he pockets the three. He may be able to pocket the three and bank the four across corner. Because he's going to need the, whole, the entire pocket to pocket this ball. He's got to hit it with good speed for the pocket to even accept it. So let's see. He's probably going to play position for the bank here. Okay, he's gotten reasonable on. He could have gotten better for the bank, but uh, this is reasonable. Well, he won the banks last year, so he should have a good shot at making this cross corner. Nice pocket speed. I don't know. Did he get? Did, can he pocket the five? He's, yeah, he's shooting over top the eight a little bit, but you know no, he's, he's okay. You know, that's another thing a lot of viewers might not consider, but when it's all ball fouls, it's a bigger challenge, too, when you're over a shot like that. Oh, absolutely. Obviously. Absolutely. Well, i got to say, he showed some heart in this rack. Not that he hasn't all along, but certainly that was no easy rack to get out on. No. Certainly wasn't. He uh, opened it up with a three-ball combination, and they followed that with uh, playing into a half a 
play hit to have a pocket. <laughs> and then he banked the four ball cross corner. Then he shot over the eight or whatever ball that was. He shot over. So therefore, there was some problems in the rack. He was able to get through the rack nicely. And he once again has come to within three games of the lead. But it's getting late in the match. Racing to 11, trilling six games to nine. Ah, ah, I don't like his chances. And he's not really opening up the balls well. So, a lot That's, of good things must happen for him right. to win this match. I'd, I'd put him at a good 5-6 to 1 underdog to win this match, at least. At least. Well, I think you called attention to the thing that we both know is the issue. He's got to break the balls better to win this thing. And he did break him better. Let's see if he gets rewarded for it. I don't think he's going to. And that was, just, that was some of the stuff I was talking about earlier when I said, right. you're not playing one pocket where you can force your opponent into making a mistake. You're playing a short rack game like nine ball or ten ball. We're playing ten ball now. So, therefore, you've got to have some luck in your, in your corner here. So, he, he broke the balls well, but he didn't pocket a ball in the break. There's no defense against this now. So, therefore, he's going to probably get to ten here. Yeah. So therefore, you know, all the manipulation and control and the management goes out the window now. It's now, it's all up to Ignacio to determine, you know, what happens here. No, it doesn't, it isn't up to Orculio. I don't think these balls look particularly bad in the layout either. They look pretty good to me. <laughs> of course, they're, 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 they're balls a little tough, open. maybe, if any of them want, is, but, you know, the three to the four leads pretty naturally, providing he gets good on the three ball this is the shot of the game right here two to the three yep this is the big shot coming right up the two to the three will pretty much give us the answer to this game wow didn't yeah. hit the five that's you know, he could have brushed that five and ended up in the side yep he could have done that okay and by shooting it in the fashion that he did he ran that risk but what other avenues were available? The two to the three was the yep. answer, and he answered it pretty good. He's got nice shape for the four, obviously, because of that. Yeah, this this has got upset written all over it, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if he goes on to win this match, and if he goes on to win this game... Really, he's done pretty much what he's been expected to do, considering the rep he has going into the match. On the other hand, Orculio, he didn't really live up to his billing. But that doesn't mean he's not the player that we know he is. Because there's a lot more pool to be played here at the Derby City. And he was the player of the year oh, yeah. last year at the Derby City. He's the guy that's pictures up there as the all-around champion 2014. But since it's a single elimination, he'll have to do that in other tournaments here <laughs> this week. Yeah. This particular tournament here on the, on the, on the 10 footer has nothing to do with winning the all around championship there. Right. So, therefore, he, uh, he has, his chances haven't been diminished at all for that title. But, you know, this is pretty good money, too. When you look at that $72,000, I mean, wow. I mean, Greg really did something bringing this into this level of, you know, and Jay together, obviously. But, I mean, that's something. I like what he's done there. Even though he, fought, he has fallen a little lower on the eight than he wanted to, he's played the correct side of the eight considering the position of the nine. Nicely struck there. He used that stroke that they really were not really that familiar with. It wasn't a draw stroke and it wasn't a follow stroke. It was an in-between that sent the cue bone between the side pocket in the nine, which sometimes is a little more difficult to execute, but no problem for Ignacio. Ignacio 10, or Corleo 6. And yes, uh, getting back to uh, Greg Sullivan, Greg Sullivan has really done a fantastic job putting this event together. So this is the 17th year that we've been here at the Derby City, first at the Executive West, and now here at Harris in Elizabeth. But this is the most 
this is the most popular tournament that we have in the United States. No Absolutely. question about it, you know. I mean, we can't wait to its Derby City time every year. You know, <laughs> and there's so many great things that transpires. It goes on in this nine, ten days that these players get together. We see the most fantastic players playing all different disciplines. Nine ball, one pocket, bank pool, ring nine ball, Bigfoot five by ten. I mean, come on. And then we have the, all the after hour action and all the characters and all the colorful stuff that goes on. I mean, it's a it's a it's a nine day experience that you really can't afford to miss. I totally if you agree. have the opportunity to come and see it, watch it. And who would have believed, Billy? that they'd be playing short rack banks in the Philippines, two Filipinos <laughs> in the finals. If I told you that 20 years ago, yeah. how much would you have bet on that? Yeah, exactly. It is Greg Sullivan that, uh, you know, should be credited with, with, with all these uh, Filipinos developing these banking skills, like you mentioned, because had it not been for the, been for the Derby City, these Filipinos wouldn't even know what a bank pool game was. Well, and bank pool would be still where it was, you know? And Nobody meantime, would know what it was. In the meantime, who are the players that have recently won the bank pool tournaments? Bustamante, yep. Oculio, Filipinos. Yep. 15 and, years ago, they wouldn't have had a chance. Well, and, you know, also Luop with Brumbeck, if you remember a few years back, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's, it's pretty much... The depth of field with the players that play good short rack banks is incredible now where you could have gone around the country 30 years ago for sure and might not even been able to find a game unless you came to Kentucky or Cincinnati, Johnny Anderson or Gary or, you know, you somebody go. like that. I get enthused about that because I think Greg should be in the Hall of Fame for that one alone, for his oh, contribution yeah, well, to no the sport. there's no question about it. This tournament here, uh, this tournament alone has positioned Greg as the premier tournament director or, or, or promoter or whatever. And uh, I also like Mark Griffin as well. Mark Griffin has done sure. quite a bit with the tournament trail in, in the professional billiards. Lena safe. Mm. Hey, I think he got a little fortunate there with the, with the leave. He was actually playing the pocket that won. Was he? Oh, absolutely. Well, Dennis didn't get fortunate with that. No, and it looks like he's left the one in a pretty good position for Agnazio to not only pocket the one, but fall on the two. Because he's got the yeah. angle that's conducive after pocketing the one to go to the right side of the table where the two is for position for the two. Three and four in the center of the table. Five sits alone at the other end of the table. The and six is positioned below the seven. That could be somewhat problematic. But when you consider the skills that this guy has, I don't think so. Proof of the pudding right there. Fell on the two nicely to get right on the three. It's a little bit of a touchy shot. You really don't want to go into the eight because you don't want to run the risk of tying up anything. So, therefore, he's going to try to stay away from the eight. Hopefully, that won't be as costly as he may think it might be. He so, might be able to roll off of this and just come right in between the eight and the three and shoot the three in the side pocket on this side over here. It's not as easy as you say, okay? That's why he's taking such a long time right here. This is a very demanding shot. He doesn't want to move the eight here. I agree. See, he doesn't want to move the eighth, and he played the shot you thought he could play, but he didn't play without a lot of thought because that's how close it was, but he didn't want to move that eight. Because once you start moving balls, when, 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 you, when you have balls that are close together like these sure. balls are, you run the risk of tying them up. He knows that's, that's how he could possibly not get out, and he doesn't want to have that happen. Yeah, this is the match right here. The five to the six, like I mentioned before. Yep. The six is the ball that's behind the seven. That's the ball that's not easy to get to. So, therefore, if he falters in this game, it's going to be from the five to the six. It'll be on this shot right here is what you're saying. No, come this shot coming up now. Well, I mean position. Yeah. So, let's see what he does here. 
This is the shot. You know, he really doesn't have much margin for error on the shot. Now, what he could do here, which is very risky uh, an overhead, what he could do here is he could either just draw it over here or he could go like this here and go this way. I like, I like for him to cinch this and just draw it right over here. Right over there. He may draw it too far. Let's see if he drew it too far. He doesn't like it. Look at his body. Oh, he yeah. does not like the results. He didn't have much margin for error. He's not out of the woods yet. But uh, Orkulo in the chair. Orkulo says, what is this? Does he have one last chance at the table? Ignacio wants to curve the ball a little bit. So bad it's killing him, but no, this is really tough. He's not, he, can't, he can't do that. He doesn't have enough time after he passes the seven to hook it around the pocket to six. I agree. That's why he regrouped, too. <laughs> and he's got to watch the kiss here, too. Watch the kiss. He's got to watch the oh kiss. Oh, boy. That was a good call, Billy. Okay, well, that was a good call. That was experience <laughs> right there talking. That was very nice. That's nice speed right there. This will be Aculio's last chance here. He's got to put it together right here. He's got no time left. Yeah, he's on the one mistake loss line. No, he's on the no mistake loss yeah. line. <laughs> well, one mistake and you lose is what I no meant. No mistakes you can lose too. Yeah, that just about <laughs> happened, right? Nice, nice. Mm, boy, 10 to 7. What a wall. 10 to 7, and he's starting to get a little closer now. 10 to 7. And he's got to continue to break the balls like he did last rack. But he didn't pocket a ball last rack, but he must still put that velocity into the break. He's got to put that power in in hopes that he can control that cue ball and get a ball down. Then he can string some racks. If he can do that, he's got a shot. But... Uh, However, Curly 10 to, to 7, I really don't like his chances. Yeah. That's right. You got to. You know, he had to take a chance to control that cue ball. He did. He made a ball too. And he got a shot. He's got trailing to ten to seven. It looks like he can narrow the gap. Maybe ten to eight. You know, things are starting to get a little more interesting here. Yeah, he's going to have to take time on this rack though, just like he did on the last. This is a big shot here. He wants to kill it. Nicely done. He doesn't want to get straight here. Okay, he wanted a little angle to go toward the three. I think he's ended up straight because he's going to have to draw past the eight now. Which he's done. Four For balls positioned it. quite convenient over to the other side of the table after he pocketing the three. Doesn't have to do much for the four. He wants an angle. Wants to keep the angle, which he's done that. Interesting shot coming up. Do you go straight across that foot spot? See, he has two ways to go here. He can go across that foot spot or he can go two rails underneath him. Or he can play the five in the corner, which is even better because Buddy Hall, the great Buddy Hall, said that Eddie Taylor said to him, when you have position, no need to play it. Yep. And that's what he had there. Yep, it's starting to get a little more interesting. You know, and I can see what a cool customer Dennis is, too, because it's all on the line, and he knows it, and he's not even phased by it. He's just playing the balls. You know, Bill, uh, not to uh, take anything away from Orkulo or anyone in this position, but once winning becomes a reality, then let's take his blood pressure. Let's take his temperature <laughs> then, okay? Right now, it's not so much 10 to 6, you know? 10 to 7, a little more. 10 to 8. Now things more. start to get interesting, okay? <laughs> That's where you can feel it. Now, this is where Aculio can feel it, because now he has a chance, yep. okay? When you don't have much of a chance, there's not much pressure. But when you start feeling you have a chance, that's when the pressure starts to build up. Let's see how he handles it now. Once again, he's got to break the balls with power. Take the chance that he can control that cue ball. Last rack, he almost jumped the table. He knows that. He's already factored that in. It was thinking process. 
Yeah, he was reaching deep last rack, in my opinion, when he broke those balls because he was looking for that break that he got. He's looking for power right now. He needs to open up those balls with power. How about that? Looks like he's going to come up dry, though. Okay, let's take a look. Uh-oh, I see something that's really bad right away. Let's get an overhead. The position of the 10 ball in the big ball position, close to the corner pocket. The position of the 3 ball where he can billiard or combinate. Very, very, very threatening for Aculio. So therefore, if Aculio gets back to the table, which I don't think he will, right? which I don't think he will, he can consider himself very fortunate, but I don't think he will. Well, the question here is just what we're coming up on. How do you get from the two to the three? I think I think he can do it two, dip way, two ways, like I mentioned. Now that he's positioned the cue ball somewhat over the seven, yep. he may be better off playing position for the billiard. Had he, had he not had a shoot over the seven, I think that he could have put a nice stroke on it and drew it down table for the combination, which is a much more reliable shot than right. the billiard. But the billiard isn't that difficult of a shot. And considering the position of the cue ball over the seven, I'd play for the billiard. Nope, he said, no, I'm stroking this. You know what? Boy, oh boy, how about that stroke, yeah, too? This match is over. <laughs> Wow. Well, you got to consider this an upset. Well, right now, maybe in a year from now, we'll look back at this and say, maybe it wasn't an upset. <laughs> well, Billy, thanks so much for coming in. I appreciate it. I've always wanted to do a match with yeah. you, and I'm glad you came up tonight and did this. This is a great match to do as yeah. well. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks so much, and for all of us here at AccuStats, we'll close off for now and come back shortly because we have another great match coming up immediately following this one, Mika Eminen and Lee Van Cortiza. So stay tuned. Grab a beer, get a sandwich, and come back with AccuStats here for the rest of the night. We'll see you soon. Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with a revolutionary X-Shox dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum cue control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters.